Hi, and welcome to the Joy Report with Rhonda in sunny Tampa, Florida, and what a beautiful day it is. I hope your day is going well. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. I am so excited today for what the Lord has for you. You know, He always has something beautiful in store for each and every one of us every day. Just like, you know, you have a table, and the table is all set, and there's a place where you sit at the table. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone open the door, I will come and sup with you. So just know that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come and sup with you today. So get ready for all the exciting things that he has for you today. Because when you get with him, he starts to stir you up and he starts to share what he has for you. In Jeremiah 29 11, these are the plans that I have for you plans to prosper. So just know that God has great great things in store for you today. Today I want to talk to you about your purpose and your and the plan of God for your life, okay? You have purpose and there is a plan and it's going to be fulfilled over your life. Amen. See, we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy, a holy people unto God. His holiness is on the inside of us and we are seated in heavenly places places with Christ Jesus. You know, Jesus is seated at the right hand seat of our heavenly father. And we are heirs of, of the kingdom. We are royal. We're a royal priesthood, just like in, in, um, in London and the royal family. You know, I was just in the supermarket and I was looking through the ads and, you know, all of the little magazines as you go to check out. And it was just all about the royal family and all the, the scoop of what's happening with this royal family. Well, you're a royal family and you are an heir to, to a great kingdom, the kingdom of God. And what we do now determines what happens when we get over to the new kingdom. And so it's very exciting. And so I want you to stay on the potter's wheel. I want the process of, of what God's doing on the inside of you to continue. And so I want to read you a story, a little bit of a story about Esther. You know, in the Esther 4.14, it says, For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. So you have to understand that Esther was in a key location. Esther was an orphan girl, and she here she is the queen, and she is in the palace, and she gets to soak in these wonderful scented baths and just be manicured and pampered all day long because now she's the queen. And so here she is, but there was something that she was going to do as queen, and that's if she was of God's choosing. Just like I have these oranges here, and I can like choose which one that I want. So Esther was of God's choosing, like so many of us. We are of God's choosing. And you know, in Isaiah 49, it says, Listen to me, you in distant lands. Pay attention, you are far away. Now this is is a call that came to Jacob, okay? Because he was of God's choosing. It says, The Lord called me before, before my birth. Amen. So God knew your name. He knew your destiny. He knew your purpose before you were born. He made my words of judgment as sharp as a sword. He has hidden me in the shadow of the hand. I am like a sharp arrow in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel. Well, Israel, he got a new name. It was Jacob to Israel. I replied, but my work seems too useless. I have spent my strength for nothing and to no purpose. Yes, I leave it all in the Lord's hands. I will trust God for my reward. And now the Lord speaks. So just know that God has chosen him at his birth. And in the King James, it said at 
It says, the Lord has called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother. Has he made mention of my name? He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. So just know that God has a call on your life, that God is calling you. He's calling you to come to him. So you can find out what he has for you. You can find out that you're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That you can find out because if you don't go to him and find out what it is that he's called you to do what is my purpose what is the plan of God for my life he reveals it every day he gives you your marching orders every day so you have to go and get filled afresh and anew every day you know in in Acts those disciples it says that they were filled but they continually went back for infillings well we have to continually go back to the Lord for him to to speak those truths over us, for him to, for us to hear those promises, for us to hear them out of our mouths, amen? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when we hear the promises that he has given us, then we get in it and we start thinking on it, you know, as a man thinketh, so is he. It's not what goes, that defiles a man. It's what, it's not what goes in. It's what comes out of the man that defiles the man. So we want good things coming out of our mouth all throughout the day. But we have to come in to the word of God in the morning, you know, and we have to give him the first fruits of our day so that he can fill us up, that he can rearrange us, change us, change attitudes, change thinkings, and give us what he would have for us during the day. And it is so amazing how God has already orchestrated the day that he every battle every meeting he gives you the victory he'll give you a word he'll give you insight because the work of the Holy Spirit is to lead you guide you and direct you into all truth well that's God's truth so for, in order for you to get those blessings you have to get from A to B right so he's giving you the keys he's giving you the insight and he's also giving you that instant in season word and the now time to take you to the meeting at noon or to take you to the meeting at two two o'clock and then four o'clock and then in the evening with your family whatever your situation is it's found in that secret place it's found with your time alone with him and I had shared that Brian Tracy as he has trained so many top top um, CEOs of fortune uh, 500 companies and so he likes to tell them to go and find a quiet place and even if it's in the middle of the day at lunchtime go pull up at a park go somewhere and just sit and just relax and don't think about anything and then right in there something will drop in and it's usually the answer to what you have need of and so he trains his his top CEO performers to train to, to how to hear the voice of God that's really what it is it's the voice of God it's quieting your mind down so you too can hear the voice of God and maybe you haven't trained yourself to hear the voice of God well it's in that stillness it's in that quietness where you shut out everything else and you just Ah, and you get yourself quiet. Don't think about anything and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you and allow Him to speak life to you. Allow Him to give you those answers and He will. And it's so amazing, the results. A day that you start in the morning with the Lord and a day that you don't. <laughs> big big difference and so you'll want to start every day with the lord and with his word and with his the confidence that comes with it with the assurance and the boldness that you would be bold to decree and bold to declare his word because we are founded we are founded here in the word of god because we are his chosen generation we're his royal priesthood and so just like the royal family they have a whole lintage and they have this whole thing that goes on we have a whole thing that goes on because we're a part of the kingdom of god and so god wants to show himself strong in you today so praise God that you turned the joy report on because we're going someplace today and I want to share about the purpose and the plan of God for your life because God had a plan and a purpose for Esther but he's got a plan and a purpose for your life and he wants to fulfill that in and through you. 
And so just know that this verse has been used extensively as a great source of inspiration. Because you always hear that saying, for such a time as this. But it is such a time as this because these are unprecedented times. Now, where have you heard that before, right? <laughs> This is a difficult season. Well, it can be for some. It doesn't have to be for all because when you know God and you know his ways and you know his voice, you're going to sail right on through because God is the author and the finisher of your faith and of your life and of your livelihood and of everything that you have. You know that everything that you have has come from your hands, right? Because God has put things in your hands to create wealth. And so he is the God of more than enough. He's the God of plenty and he's going to fulfill his promises. He is going to, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. So he's always going to be that. He can't lie can't deny himself and he can't not do his word so he is a multiplication type of god right <laughs> everything he touches everything he's he's created multiplies so everything in your hand is going to multiply when you go out to make lunch and you're in your kitchen and you got your six kids or however many kids and you got to make lunch he's going to multiply that if you pray over it you know why do we pray over our food well hello let me tell you why we pray over our food because we bless it because anything that's in there or anything that needs to be put in there God puts in and anything that it needs to be taken out he takes out because our food source has been uh, some of its GMOs genetically modified food source and it tries to go in our body and our bodies can't read it so when we bless it whenever we bless anything is there's this supernatural power that go comes over that and it is working on our behalf so we bless our food and we're, we we bless our water. So we know that our God is all powerful. He's a miracle working God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's going to continue to do those miracles. Just like he, he opened up the Red Sea. He's going to create those miracles in your life. You're going to know him. You know, a lot of people come to know God because of a sign and a wonder. What is a sign and a wonder? Well, it's a sign that makes you wonder. And God is in the miracle business. And he wants to perform a miracle in your heart and in your life and provision for you in these precedent times. Amen. And Issachar, he was one of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? And Issachar, he knew the signs of the times. He knew the seasons, okay? For you to know the season of your life, things that are coming, you know, because the Holy Spirit prepares us all through the Old Testament. He was making way for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was his first coming. And so guess what? He's coming again. And so we're preparing for his second coming and we're getting the church ready. We're getting you ready. We're getting you stirred up for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we all have to be positioned because guess what? A lot is going to take place. And a lot of prophecy is already being fulfilled. And I just saw that there was an earthquake took place in Indonesia. There's rumors of war and earthquakes and famines. We've seen all of this. So it's so coming. We are on the horizons and I want to be on the wave. You know, these surfers, they look for this great wave. We've been to Hawaii. We've been to the South Shore. We've watched those surfers take those waves, you know, and they're waiting for that perfect wave. Well, I'm telling you what, we're on a wave with the Lord and I want you high on that wave. Amen. I want you on your surfboard. I want you riding that wave with the Lord Jesus Christ because he is your provider. He is your provision. He is your soon and coming king. And so he's got everything under control. So you have to keep yourself under him. <laughs> you know, Psalms 91, he that abideth under the shadow of the almighty, I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my provider. He is my source. And you have to know that you know that you know that he is control over you. And you've got to yield and give that control over to him. Don't try and take the control back. Don't get to worrying again. Don't get to fretting again. Don't get anxious. Put all that aside and pick up the word today. Read some scriptures that cast that fear out. 
Perfect love casts out fear. So the more love that you have for the Father and you see His promises, the things that He's already provided for you, I want you to partake of those. Just like I can partake of this fruit and I can just start opening it up and I can just start eating on it. Well, God has so many promises that He wants you to partake of. But you're going to have to get in His Word. You're going to have to find those promises for your family, for your livelihood. You know, some things are on the balance right now. Some good things are right around the corner for you. Promotions, new jobs, new sources of supply, unexpected sources of supply. But as you are in the secret place, God is revealing himself and he's going to show you where they are, where those hidden secrets are, where those hidden treasures are. There's hidden treasure. Yes, there is. And he's going to show you. <laughs> so whatever it is you're trusting him for, he's going to lead you. He says the steps of a righteous man and woman are ordered of the Lord. You're ordered of the Lord today. So know that just like Esther was ordered. And so she had a destiny to fulfill. And so, and it was for the body of Christ. And however, this verse was written specifically about a queen who came into a position of authority and direct influence with the king. King Mordecai, it was her cousin. you were, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but you can read about the story of Esther. But just know that now she's in the palace and she's loving the palace life. She's loving dressing up and having these beautiful clothes and jewelry and eating the finest of the fine. And she's being lavished in these beautiful tubs and all this beautiful, you know, scents and perfumes. And, you know, they, they used to just really um, use the essential oils and they just bathe and bathe. And it would just, you know, even with Jesus's body, you know, when, when she poured out her oil on him and gave all of that, his body was smelling so beautiful. And when he was whipped with that cat of nine tails and he was beaten and bruised and shattered and, and they just couldn't even recognize him for you and I, for our healing in our body. Well, that aroma was filling because he was anointed and she had put all of that oils all over him. She prepared his body. So anyway, just know that there is an aroma that goes up to our heavenly father and just know that he knows his children and he's watching over his word in your life. So Esther came into that position of queen. And so let's imagine how wonderful it could be to take a whole month to soak in a bathtub filled with special oils. Well, maybe you've been soaking in the bathtub because you've had a whole month, right? <laughs> So just know that it, the fragrance is just amazing in the perfumes. And so just know that she came out from being an orphan. Come on, think about it. And now she's got more than enough. And she's just sitting in this beautiful place. But God had a plan for her life. God had a purpose for her life. Now her, her she was Jewish and her people were being, uh, they were wanted to eradicate them. They wanted to destroy the Jewish people. But here she was in a position and she was close to the king. She could go speak to the king and she could find favor. And so not only did she do that, she had a purpose in her position. And a lot of people that have authority, there is a purpose in their position, but they might not know why they're there and what they're to do until they have a defining moment with the Lord. And that's where prayer comes in because not only did she know that she was to use her voice to go speak to the king, she had the, all the Jewish people um, fasting for three days so that she would have the power, that she would have the boldness, that she would have that supernatural strength that comes from prayer. There is power in prayer. And when one will put a thousand, two will put 10,000. When you can get a whole group of people praying, it pushes back the darkness. It creates a way where there is no way. Amen. That's a nugget for you today. <laughs> So just know you're going to create a way where there is no way. So this is what was happening there. And so we know the story that she went and that she used her wisdom. It says this part, that she, she had this heavenly supply of wisdom and grace and strength, which comes through the prayers of God's people to those who have been placed in positions of natural authority. So the prayers were given the grace and the wisdom. And she had the Jewish people praying. So before, so when she went up to the king. So you see, you have a purpose. You have a plan. God wants to do that to you. 
you. He wants to bring forth things out of you. And maybe you don't know what your gifts are. Maybe you don't feel like you even know the purpose of your life. Why am I even here? You know, I have a lot of different friends and I have one friend and she was an attorney in another country, right? And so now she's not a practicing attorney here, but she, it is so in her and she has always, always been uh, watching the signs of the time and she loves end times but she also watches all of the politics and everything that's going on she can tweet she can she has followers out the wazoo because that's a gift it was a gift that god put on the inside of her from before she was in her mother's womb just like you you have gifts you have talents and you have a purpose and god wants to fulfill his purpose through you just like he did with the queen going to save the jewish nation going to save the jewish people because she was in a place of authority and she used her voice and she knew what she was to do for such a time as this and you're going to know what to do and use your authority and use where god has placed you maybe you don't know why god's placed you there and but you're gonna find out because god wants to reveal himself to you and give you that plan so you can get going with what he has for you and just know that that he's going to let you fulfill it and the anointing and the power and the direction and the influence of God is going to be on you to fulfill it. Through prayer, the church will issue and dispense the anointing by which these people will fulfill the prophecies. So we know that we help dispense the prayers and the anointing over people in civil, come on, say it, civil, people that are in authority over us, people that are in our civil capacity that are lording over in our government, in our in the Senate, in the and our president, all those that are in authority over us. That's why we pray for these individuals that the anointing of the Lord would come upon them, that they would know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And as they yield to the Spirit of God, because they're on behalf of us. Just like when I was reading that Israel, it was Jacob, he got a name change, right? A lot of times you see that in the scripture, they'll get a name change. So here he he was he says listen to me all you distant lands pray attention you are far away the lord called me before my birth so he got boldness he got wisdom he got strength the anointing of the lord was upon him and the anointing of the lord wants to be upon you to fulfill your purpose to fulfill your plan wherever he sat you wherever he seated you in heavenly places if you're a minister of the gospel or if you're a layman whatever walk of life that you are in whatever capacity that you are serving in god wants to put his hand upon you he wants you to know that you know that you know that he's with you he's for you he's not against you and he wants to give you everything that you have need of amen so just know that he has positioned you for such a time as this and so he's going to continue to pour out his spirit upon you and know that now now is the time. This is the day. No turning back. And that he's going to open up doors that no man could open for you in your business, in your church, in your city, in your state, in the nation of this world that we, United States of America, are going to rise up. The people are going to rise up. They're going to have wisdom. They're going to have understanding of what to do. Because I have a lot of people that are going to the capital of their state and they're writing letters to their governors and do you know how many of those office seats are open for re-election you know you can always find the money trail and you know what you need to look up on those websites you need to look up on those people that are in authority over you those same people that you're praying for do a little do a little credit check on them I mean as far as what they're doing how they're voting who who has who has um 
sponsored come on who has sponsored their uh their office you know a lot of them need a lot of campaign funds to go and to do these campaigns to stay in office who are the biggest contributors do you see them do you see them working on that end of it or do you see them working for we the people so get your letters written to your senators to your congressmen to your governors so we can push back the darkness that's trying to take over our land you have a part to play get in your position let the plan of god arise on the inside of you take your place take your authority today your authority in christ jesus he is the highest voice in the land so let him be in you today let the power of god fill your voice take off the mask <laughs> take off the mask where's my mask <laughs> Take off the mask. I lost my mask. Take off your mask and let your voice be heard. Because if your mouth is muzzled, you can't be speaking. You can't understand. Let the words of your mouth be yes and amen today. You be the answer to the problem. You be that sharp quiver. You know, that instrument of precision today in your business, in your home, in your family, in your state, in your city. As you pray, you're changing things but then you might go a step farther and write those letters and you might go a step farther and decide to support one of those candidates and you might even go a step further and find out that you don't want to support some that you have supported but do your homework know that you know that you know because when you are spending hours and praying for people you want to know that they have good fruit and that they are producing for we the people and that they don't have special interest that they don't have an agenda amen so you be blessed today this is the joy report i'm going to sign out i love you keep yourself stirred up know that the joy of the lord is your strength today and you can do all things through christ that strengthens you you be blessed today until we meet again i'm peacing out love you